everyone, I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. This week's matchup featuring two teams who both came away with wins a week ago and know it should be a good battle today. It's the Diablos going up against the Brooklyn Barons. With that, we're off to the borough of Brooklyn. On the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Today, we've got a Week 13 matchup for you here between the Mexico City Diablos and the Brooklyn Barons. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Brooklyn ball club. They come in playing pretty good football, winners of four of their last six games. Meanwhile, from Mexico City, our visitors, they've come in on a nice run of recent form, four wins out of five. The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in week 13. It's a short kick, taking it to 15. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And leading him out, their veteran quarterback. fake here on first down wide open receiver complete 17 yards on the game's opening play and a quick first down an ex-teammate used to tell me all the time i hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what you really can't hide what you're doing and i think that right there he knew right away where the blitz was coming from where his primary guy was going to be and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game i was just going to ask you that wasn't the primary target and he's so good at that isn't he i think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy i think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage knew where the pressure was going to come from and said ah i know how to beat that and that's what he did it'll be a pickup of only a yard and that's going to lead to a third and 11. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Third and 11, five in the secondary now. Nickel look. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. Ten yards still left on second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Here we go now. Move, ah! Out of the gun now on third down. This will be caught inside the 10. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Yeah, the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Here we go. Lucky 56. Lucky 56. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will he be able to revert? and fire out and create some space in the run game. Second and goal, defense digging in again here. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Trying to finish off this opening drive from the three, this is third and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want a back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. And the 13-year man puts it through. And the opening drive of the game yields three. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points. But they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And a glance here at their shifty mobile signal caller. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be a second down. The wide receivers, often a very, very talented group, and that's the case here. And they don't mind showcasing it either. Those guys love to be flashy, love to make big plays out in the open field. They will attempt to do so in this game. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Brandon, I'm going to guarantee that the defensive coordinator just gave a huge sigh of relief. He had his dime package in the game, six defensive backs, and when they run draw and big offensive linemen are thundering downfield, that's usually a win for the offense. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. The 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Their dangerous wide receiver. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And his guys have taken a first quarter lead. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Now Andrew Frank's on for the point after. He's got it, and they'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. Franks now on to kick it away after the touchdown. Then a short kick, taking it about the 16. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So out now comes the offense back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put it through the base. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> it's really simple to say that they know their identity, that they are a passing team. But one of the reasons that they're so successful, they know how to mix in the run and make sure that they keep the defense off balance and not able to just simply say, let's go get the quarterback and disrupt things. 
And he finds a man with a crossing route. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Ooh, with a juke. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And his throw is incomplete. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it, trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. An extra defensive back in the game now, here for third and four. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And this time he's got the hookup, it's complete. Give him 12 yards on that one, it earns him a fresh set of downs. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Can't find anyone open. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one, you know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive lineman, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. Oh, and just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. And here we go on first and goal. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. All right, here we go. 
Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Well, partner, the hit sure looks like a simple route, but I think the issue with it is a lot of time when you're making that play, you're actually working your way back inside towards traffic where the big guys are coming from inside out, whether it's defensive ends or linebackers. And a lot of the time, instead of securing the pass, your eyes might stray towards the middle and wonder where the big hit's going to come from. to throw on third and goal. And it's caught. Touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver. His second touchdown on the season. And his guys are going to retake the lead. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower. Bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Now this offense ready to take over again. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right direction because, as you did note, they are down on the scoreboard. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. On play action, they'll throw. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground. And then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. They'll come out in the pistol. Let's go. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Finding time. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Obviously, they didn't get everything they wanted on that completion, but they put themselves in a spot where you've got to at least think about going for it. I know where we are on the field, but still, you've got to think about it, don't you? So they bring out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And now back out comes the offense. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Really tough drive, but that run helped salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back. And now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at. Going forward, watching it on tape, Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. Oh. 
So here we go, first and ten now. They come out here in the eye. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And he's got his man on the out route. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. So one quarter in the books on a cold December afternoon. 10-7 our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Snickers. You're off your game when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Brooklyn football as we get going in quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. They'll set up to throw. And this is caught on the sideline. But no, they'll say out of bounds. He caught it but was not in bounds. Incomplete. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just hey, couldn't stay in bounds. Green, 39. Green, 39. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. <laughs> Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. Give him eight on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. And they're just a couple of yards shy of a first down here on third down. One receiver left, two to the right. Let's go! They'll go to the air here on third and two. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. Nine yards on the play and a first down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. So the offense has it first and 10. Again, he'll drop the throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And this time they go underneath for a simple pitch and catch. And not only do you get the pitch and catch, Brandon, but you're able to keep the receiver moving when you hit him with the drag route. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football. In that situation, it's almost a tendency breaker. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carroll... Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. Turn as he brings this all the way back down to the 20-yard line. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty.
The defense working their way back out now onto their home turf. Their stay on the field last time was short-lived with a three and out. See if they can get some more of that. And ordinarily, you want to be on the field playing, right? But three and out, that's almost gold to a defense. Get to the bench, get some rest, turn the ball over to your offense. We'll see what they can do here, see if they can force another three and out. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. How many times when we see an incomplete pass, we just look at the receiver and say, ah, should have caught that one. That was a drop, and we just put it on the offense. How about a little credit for the defense there? They just forced an incompletion. Yeah, especially after starting in a tough spot defensively, but a good start there on first down. That gave them a little extra confidence there, starting, as you said, in a tough spot and being able to make the play on first down. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Offense coming up, needing two yards on third down. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a hunting down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. And he's into the end zone for the receiving touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver with his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And his guys have once again taken the lead. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come? I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. And he's got it up and through. Franks now on to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to write the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. Going right side here, and that's complete. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Not only was it a double move route, it was the dreaded post corner for any defensive back because you think that he's going all the way to the post in a deep route, and then he breaks it off to the corner. That's hard to flip your hips and get there. Well, he didn't flip them in time. Big play. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. They'll run it now out of the gun. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Now a handoff here to his running back, and he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Go, 
And here comes play number six on this drive. now out of the gun and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run and at that yardage gain they can run that play on any down. A lot of attention paid this week in practice to red zone offense. The coach was optimistic about how it went. We'll see. Someone moved, flag is out, that's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. of seven on the sack and it brings up second and there they bring pressure from the inside and they get home yeah hard to block everyone isn't it and on this play <laughs> someone did not get blocked he's the one who got home snap as they'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. So now a third and 12 with an extra defender here in the secondary, a nickel look. They'll drop to throw. And the defense has it covered. It's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Now this offense ready to head back out there. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I see, love we'll it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. A gain of three, second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. tailback two yards on the carry there it'll be second down that's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball held him to a gain of two and that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays second and eight 
Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. And he'll give it here to his running back. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of four. Now third down. And that has to be frustrating for the offense. They caught him in a dime package, six defensive backs on the field. If you're going to run draw and run your big guys as smaller people, you should have success on that play. Instead, the defense won the battle. The 13 yards that time at a first. Everything about that play was beautiful. A great corner route where the receiver worked the defensive back inside and then broke back to the outside to the corner. But how about the throw by the quarterback? Anticipation on the break from inside to outside. He threw the football. As the receiver turned around, the ball greeted him. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line lower than the defensive front. They moved him and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. A reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm going to check in with a heater. I'm going to be right there with you, partner. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. They'll set up to throw. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but... That's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. They're going to look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. All right, here we go. 319. They'll look to throw on third and goal. To the sideline, and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. So now it's Andrew Franks on for the field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Frank's kick is good. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here. And two picks thrown here in this first half alone. We'll see how that affects him. Can't wait to see where his confidence is because the great ones, they'll throw four or five picks, and while it'll hurt their team, right, it won't go. hurt their confidence. They'll throw something which is wrong with the ball or the wind <laughs> or something was funny. It's never about them. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Single receiver, single receiver. Hey, you're on an island over there. Single receiver. 
They'll come out in the pistol. Let's go! Green 39! Green 39! He'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Now hang on here, timeout called, timeout called by the defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On third down, he'll drop to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And brought down, but the juke, the very nice juke, gives him the first down yardage there. And the offense moving quickly to the line. They'll look to throw now on first down. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. He'll drop to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. They'll look to throw. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. So it is third down now, but less than a yard to go. They'll look to throw here. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Back to throw here. Looking middle, and that's complete. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. He connected on his first, this from 41. And his kick is good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. It's a short kick, taken at the 15. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Barons have been solid in the secondary to this point. The Diablos have struggled now for two straight weeks in the passing department, and so it just hasn't been a big part of their offense. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Third and seven. The pass is completed into tight coverage, and this play will go for six. They're now on top by four. Now third and eight. The connection is made in the middle of the field, and he kept off the long drive with the TD. They go ahead by a field goal. Offense out now following the INT. Pass will be completed out of the gun. And a quick three-play drive ends with a score. The lead grows to four. Third down at the 21. The pass ends up being picked off. Diablo's defense forces the turnover. So that'll do it from our studios in Orlando. Let's get you back up to the borough of Brooklyn as we rejoin Brandon and Charles. That a short kick, taking it about the 16. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. 
So here they come, the road team now getting the football first to start this third quarter. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had the ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Throws a quick hitter on the slant, that's complete. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone sometimes you're throwing it between the zone sometimes the receiver is going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there it's a tough read but when they're in sync it's really effective They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. So this is the second consecutive week as you look at the numbers that he just doesn't seem to have the same pop as we normally see him with. Is there an injury we don't know about? That's what I'm wondering. Because that's a legitimate question right now. We're used to speed, power all coming together. And what I've always loved about him is his vision. You know, last week he didn't have that as well. Always thought he was picking the wrong hole to try and run through. And his blockers, they seem to be getting him to the right place, but he picked the wrong spot. We're seeing some of that again this week. Can they snap it together? Can they get back in sync? Because normally we see them go together very, very well. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork. And they add a little bit of power. And you find a way to pick up first downs. They'll give it to him right up the gut. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Now a handoff here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Now I can't imagine any celebrations being any bigger than your first NFL touchdown. And this rookie running back is still seeking his. He's not going to get it on that play. They'll give it to him right up the gut. But he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. And the seemingly endless drive continues. Fits inside the five here at the four. It's first and goal. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Looking at this now, you got a couple more cracks here. This close, sneak it. I don't think even go into a huddle. Just line up, snap it, and fall in behind those guys into the end zone. 
False start's going to push him back, but these days, how hard must it be to be an offensive lineman? It's very hard, Brandon. You've got defensive linemen flinching, trying to draw you off sides. You've got the loud crowds, and there are just so many super athletic players on defense now that you have to deal with each week. But through it all, these guys just sit in there for four quarters and slug it out. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. All right, I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> Looking to throw. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. And Frank's kick is good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. So they get the field goal, but partner, that was a 14-play drive to get the three. Normally, when you hold the ball that long, run that many plays, you end up in the end zone. There's a breakdown on the defense. Something happens. In this case, that didn't, but really good ball control by the offense. They're hoping that they can wear them down if they keep having drives like that. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. When you decide to run a hitch route, it really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Seven yards remaining here on third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The corner blitz pays off there as they sack him for a loss of five. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. And they'll send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. Take it at the 37. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And here now the offense heading back out there. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But you also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get... He rifles one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Maybe he telegraphed it a little bit right there. You've got a quarterback knowing that he's going against a rookie quarterback. He stepped in and picked it. You think he had a great week of preparation, looking forward to this opportunity? And the second part of that is, when you're a young quarterback, you are going to stare down targets. But oftentimes, your playbook hasn't expanded to give you full field reads as well. Makes it a little bit tougher for him. Now this offensive unit, ready to see what they can do here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game 
this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Fresh set of downs here. They'll look to throw. He's got time. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Quick hitter here. It's complete. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And now on third down, they'll need to get it to the 36 to pick up the first. Here we go now. Three, 19. Back to throw again. He's got time in the pocket. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. It looked like he might have had a window there, but the rhythm was just a little bit off. Certainly was, because everything that has to come together to get a pass completed, yeah, you're right. The sink just wasn't there. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So out now comes the offense back onto the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, you get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. And when an offense is doing a nice job selling the play action pass, a lot of responsibility shifts to the linebackers. They're the ones that have to determine run or pass and get to the proper places on the field. Stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. <laughs> oh, a heck of a move. Man. And he's brought down. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a short gain down to about the 33. Yeah, give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Here we go now, green, 39, green. Now back to throw. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. to throw now on first down. And he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. 
And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because the, you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. Second and goal to go now. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit because he actually handed it off. I thought with the two touchdown passes he's thrown in this one already, he got to fling and try and get a third one. Yeah, now from this spot, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. A tough time to take the sack. Now it's fourth and goal, and that's a loss of six. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus a right-handed quarterback, that's the blind side. He's going after the quarterback. He's going to put him on the ground. Back now just east of Manhattan in Brooklyn. As it looks like we are just about set and ready to begin with the fourth. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Frank's kick is good. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. So that's a big one there. It's his third field goal of the game, and a two-score lead's got to feel pretty good right about now. And while they're not free and clear yet, you're right. Now this defense can go out knowing that it's going to take more than one big play to catch them. Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. Short kick here. Fielded about the 17. This offense ready to take over again. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. All right? So you've got to go. There he goes right side. And touchdown. Their big tight end. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And his guys have made this a one-score game now. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call, but he got it and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was, a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. A try here for the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal now. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And now back out comes the offense. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not all now joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. Right, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. Again, we'll see the pistol here. They'll set up to throw. Surveying the field. And no escaping this 
this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. It's a loss of a yard, so they'll wind up crediting him with a sack, and it brings up third down. But Brandon, sometimes I think when we watch games, we're actually watching a living museum because we're seeing the evolution of positions almost with each passing game. How about defensive ends nowadays and the way that they can run almost all the way across the field? It is unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, they're, they're so strong, but they're so lean, they can move so quick with those bodies. It's almost unfair. You're supposed to be able to know where a defensive end is supposed to be on every play. These guys flash so quickly, you're not sure where they're going to end up. And the offense needs seven out of this play on third down. They'll look to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it. And then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Now stopped him in his tracks. And on now is the punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. This is taken at the 23. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. Now this offense ready to head back out there. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time. You see, if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. to throw finding time and pressure coming and they got him once again they get to him for a loss of four and it brings up third down on the sack so brandon we sat in with a lot of coaches and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively i'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet Big sack on second down. Now the offense needs to convert here on third. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Out of the gun now on third down. Pressure gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Looks like a nine-yard loss, and it also brings up fourth. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. Well, they bring their punter out there now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he uncorks a beauty, best of the day. This is taken at the 10. A great return there of 22 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. Out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he's just going to get rid of this thing to no one here. He throws it away. And now it's third. 
Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it. And if he gets those shoulders right, that pass will go from incomplete to complete. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And a nifty little deep juke spin move. Not a great deal there on the back end, but a nice game still. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And the punter stands ready. on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And this will be taken at the 13. That'll be a 43-yard punt, but a net of just 33 following a 10-yard return. And here now the offense heading back out there. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete here. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he was able to bat it away. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. He's nowhere to escape, and he goes down. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. And they'll add a DB in the secondary here on third and 14. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Complete pass on third down, but short of the marker. So here comes the punt. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Now 
Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Well, they'll take that every time with a lead first down, fourth quarter, getting eight yards. You love that. They will take it. And you have to ask the defensive guys, why did you give it? I mean, you know the situation. You're down. Have to stop them. Have to get the football back. But eight yards on first down puts them back on their heels. It'll be a gain of two on the play, but they'll remain a few inches short here with third down looming. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now you're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Give them six yards and they do convert on third. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players. Guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position, now more than ever, is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that, plus three. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. When a coaching staff sees their team run the ball this successfully in the fourth quarter, they're really excited because you can plan for a running game all you want and want to press that advantage when you get it. But for the most part, it's a little bit of a surprise. And right now, they've got to keep that going, want to continue to grind out the clock because it's definitely in their favor at this stage of the game. Can they close the game out and continue to do exactly what we just saw there? And that's run the football. Two receivers left, one to the right. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. He's got, and he's going to go down. Back across midfield, he sacked at the 46. And I know it seems like we say this a lot in broadcast booths, but a quarterback can hold on to the football too long in these situations. I think he did right there. Oh, I agree with you totally. Sometimes you have to understand situations. Get rid of the football, save some yardage to make it less to gain for the next down. Instead, he was so hipped on ball security, he held on to it and took a big sack. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. to throw and he's got some space here and he'll slide down to avoid the contact and they pick up 25 as they convert on third So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Play clock winding down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's our visitors with the football as we get you reset. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. Ooh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, up, here we go. Three and nineteen. And they'll go on the ground. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the twenty. 
Now defensively here, we're going to get a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Now it looks like he'll throw here. Looking for someone to throw to. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. And there will be a break in the action here. They're going to take a timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. All right, here we go. Green, 39. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And Frank's kick is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. It's a short kick taken near the 18. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So out now comes the offense back onto the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. He's got his man on the crossing route. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. They'll look to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Left, 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 left. Hold this. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. And at 50 seconds left, he'll spike it to stop the clock. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. He'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant.
A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for our visitors, they continue to make their case for the playoffs as they move to 9-3. and three, And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the home team here, they fall to 6-6 six and six now on the campaign. And they will try to get back in the swing of things next week on the road. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. So long, everybody.